The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman on this Wednesday, Wednesday the uh, 22nd of September and we're looking at, uh, this is now what, 10.06 in the morning, we're looking at the, the spike yesterday to the upside that was given back and we closed at the low of the day. Today we're seeing the opposite. Even though I had a Chapman Wave trend gauge low reading yesterday, which suggests that the Dow should be uh, negative at some point early on and then and then rally, uh, we've actually had a pretty decent rally. And now the market is expecting. We'll see whether or not uh, the there is some. Usually there's some kind of a pullback within the hour and a half to the hour to 30 minutes before the Fed speak, and then it just kind of holds steady. Uh, and then it starts to move. We'll see if that happens today because all the selling, I mean, look at the selling that's going on. You can see it via the volatility index. The VIX index is trading uh, down at 21.89. It's down 10%. It's down 2.47 off to 28.79. It's unusual for the, um, it's happening more and more that the uh, daily chart of the volatility index actually makes a peak D. Before, I used to say it's the only, it's one of the very few instruments in the entirety of the smorgasbord of potential tradables that doesn't go to a peak D. Look at this peak D back in May at 28.93, plummets down to 14.10 in June, rallies to the high of the 19th, I think that was, 19th, yep, 19th of July, 25.09 rates, Delta virus, etc. Uh, so it's a, a lower high, goes to peak D, pulls back, starts a big move up, goes to A minus uh, from the 15 point, what was that? 15.19 low on the 13th of August, uh, rallies up, then pulls back sharply from the 24s, goes to the 15th, and then it spirals to uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Monday's high of 28.79. And now it's pulling back. And usually after PD, it pulls back for a little while. So I'm not sure if we've seen a low, whether we've seen the low. Um, it's it's uh, it's kind of tough to tell. My, my suspicion is, based on the mix in the market with the NASDAQ 100, a lot of the instruments in the NDX 100 are, are really struggling. Look at Amazon. Amazon, AMZN, uh, up 22 with 3,367. It's very, it's really struggling. It's making the arch formation at an all-time high of 3773.08 on the 13th of July. Made that dreaded H pattern, the Chapman wave broke down, went one to one to the downside, then made another move under the 200 period moving average, spiked above it, and now it's getting back to the 3285 key support. So we're looking at. A re it's actually a very mixed market. Look at the IYT. The IYT, which uh, includes, of course, FedEx, is up a dollar thirty-two at two forty-six, making a low yesterday of two forty-one point twenty-one. A leg E in the weekly chart and the dreaded H pattern. So this is very important because this is the second week that it's gone underneath the left side low uh, that was made back in July of two hundred forty-five point forty-eight. And now it's gone a little bit above that. It went below it, closed below it. That's a negative. Well, watch, watch to see what's happening because if you look at Jets, which is the airline, this is the U.S. Global Jets ETF, American Airlines, um, trading up 43 cents to 23.10. Uh, this is a nice move considering COVID and then the variant, the Delta variant. Yeah, it's stuck in a range. It isn't breaking down, but it's not breaking up either. But it is uh, a very, very interesting. Oh, look at that fascinating. See this little sideways V-shaped pattern, a pennant formation in the monthly chart. What was the chart that I was looking at earlier on today? Oh, it just had a absolutely. Did I write it down? I always say write these things down as, as examples <laughs> of what you're looking at. 
all right, I don't have it. I don't know what it is. I'll have to try to find it somehow. It was just perfect like this, but it was... Oh, it's coming back to me now. Um, all right, I'll, I'll find it. I don't, I don't want to waste time right now. So uh, let's just continue. We want to look at the... Um, so I don't remember gold. Looking at gold, gold right now is trading... <clears throat> Uh, down three and a half at 1774. You see, it's just stuck in a range. Uh, if you look at the falling axe formation in the weekly chart, it's got all that a lot of resistance. It isn't breaking down. It's not breaking up. I just think it's in a very narrow trading band. Let's put it. Well, first of all, do silver. Silver is down. Oops, now it's up. Uh, up 19 cents at 22.80. Uh, looking at the arch formation after the PD, one to one to the downside, a little bit more than that. It's trying to get back into the range of 22.82. It needs to break into the 23.50s to say, oh, okay, I'm back trying to get back into that whole range with that ugly candle from it was last week, Thursday or Friday, Friday I think it was, uh, where it had a high of 20. Hmm, there's a lot of trading going on, a little slow here on the platform. 24 round number high. Well, no, I think it just it undercut it. I think it was 23.98 or something. Uh, 20, ah, 24 round number high on the 16th, and it comes tumbling down the same day to 22.74. So it wants to get into that candle. We'll see how it can handle that. Let's go to the dollar DXY. Dollar right now is trading uh, up four ticks at 93.24, holding quite nicely at the high end of the range. Now we're looking at the oh, BTC Bitcoin, um, Bitcoin sitting on the 200 period exponential moving average peak D at 50, 55, 55, 53,125 pulls back a little bit. We're still long from way down 12,400s uh, via the Bitcoin fund. Uh, now what we're looking at is I want you to do crude oil. Crude oil is. Um, moving nicely to the upside at 71.70, up a dollar 21. There's a Chapman falling X formation. What does that mean? Chapman falling X formation for those of you new to my work. Well, it means that you've come down, you're making lower highs and much lower lows, then you form a base of support and you try to break out. See, a rising price. In this case, you go to peak D, you pull him back, you're making lower highs and lower lows. Then you try to find a, a base of a support and take out that trend line, the declining upper trend line, and then you can go one to one to the upside to re retest the high. So this is right on the cusp. If it gets to 72.35 or higher, that means there's a really good chance it's going to break to a new uh, recovery high. All right, let's get to, um, I've covered most of, oh, what did I just do? Ooh, this is very difficult. Okay, I'll get it back in. Just trying to get these uh, panels correct. There it is, panel. One on the left side, daily, weekly on, in the middle. On the right side is the monthly chart. It's broken above that falling X monthly down, mini down channel. So we'll see what happens. What happens here with the uh, weekly? All right. Yeah, it's the same sort of thing. It needs to get into the 72.30s, 73s, and then all of a sudden that's a breakout to the outside. All right, we've got our break coming up here. Uh, wow, there's a lot going on. Yep, I'll talk about that, and I'll talk about that, and I'll talk about the speakers as well. We'll be back in a moment, Basil Chapman. Thank you, Christian Zauer. A quick break, and then we'll be back with a lot to cover and a lot of questions came. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks, we're back, and uh, a couple of, quite a number of people had mentioned yesterday when I was showing the 30-minute chart, just the chap wave with a naked chart, and just saying, look, there are things you can do just by counting the waves and very simple techniques. Uh, could you do a little more of that? Well, this shows the E-mini trading leg D in the 30-minute chart. I have a chap wave inside, right here, inside wedge, target resistance line, and that says... On a shorter term basis, the 43, uh, 43, is that 80? Yeah, 86 area would be um, strong resistance if it can get there. It's in leg D in the 30 minute chart at 43.79. This is a yeah, December E mini, uh, SB E mini. And we're looking at the chance that it could get to the high of yesterday in that big spike that at three o'clock went to. 43.95.75. Whoops, no, what am I talking about? 20, yeah, 21st. Uh, 43.91, I think I said. 95. Um, 95. And if it's going to do anything like that, it would go all the way to around about 1.30 or 2 o'clock this afternoon. That's based on this. And key support is at 4.379. At any point, if there's a one 30-minute bar that closes under 43.68, that would say that this peak D is probably taking a breather and it's in a rest period. All right, you want to see what it does in the gold? Yeah, look at the gold. Um, it went to a peak C1, C2, C3. Let's pull back. Uh, that resistance that I drew in yesterday, it went just a tad above it and pulled back. So gold is in a digestive phase, it's down just two at 1776 on the continuous contract, but it is trying to form a second cup formation, so we can't ignore it right now. It, very often, peak C1, C2, C3 gives you enough, if you don't pull back very far, it gives you the strength to finally make a peak T. We'll see if that's possible. Let's look at crude oil. Yeah, we are crude oil. Yeah, but it went to a peak D with a chapter with instant restart. That's a G stats C. At the moment, I'm just going to call this a D. I won't get into the technicals a little f further than that, other than to say, yeah, it did pull back off to the G slash C, but it did continue higher. Uh, let's come back to this. And this is a D. You could call it a D slash A, just to say, you know, I don't know what to do, 
And what you do in a case like this is you say, hey, wait a minute, there's still strength. It's still making higher highs and higher lows. Um, just keep in mind that there's nothing yet to say that it's got a, a, a pretty good sell signal. So let's get out of this for the moment. And we'll just keep this up for, for a while in the 30-minute chart. Now, um, let's go back to our story. So mentioned here in the den was ARQQ. We discussed that yesterday, and I said, uh, no, is that A? A, uh-oh, ARRQ, I think is. Yep, ARQQ. So I had seen this go along the uh, ticker last week, and I thought, what on earth? Let me just get to this, sorry. Um, it is AR. QQ. Did I not type that in? A R Q Q. No, oh, I noticed it last week, as I um, as, a, as some going on the ticker, and I thought, gee, this is very interesting. Over the weekend, I thought, oh, what is this? Um, and then on Monday, I actually decided to take a bit more of a look at that, and lo and behold. It isn't, I thought, ARKK, which is Kathy Wood, is one of her funds, ARKK. Uh, I thought, all oh, right, that's in real trouble. It's in a trading band. It's not going anywhere. Is this one of those? Is this one of hers? And then I looked and I, I saw that it was, in fact, AR, that it, it, it was really a fascinating company, Arcut Quantum Inc., Quantum encryption technology platform as a service, making communications links secure against attacks. I thought, wow, in this environment, this is just perfect. Well, it had a huge, I didn't get a chance to even put it in the newsletter. It just started to move, and it went from the 15s, and in a few days, it went all the way to today's high of 38, 39. I said to subscribers this morning, it still might happen, I don't think so that we would like to buy it. I like it as a trade. I know it's already gone, but this is, every once in a while you get something that has, I don't know what you can call it, some kind of appeal uh, to, to traders. This seems to fit everything there. It's got, it's got the security aspect, like hack, the uh, ETF, uh, the security ETF. It's got technology, it's got encryption, it's got, I mean, it's got everything in it. So I thought, great. And then yesterday I had a, a, someone in the den asked about it, where would you go in, where would you buy it for a leg C? And I said, well, it's already moved up. And I think I would said somewhere in the, it was at, tw I said, you could nibble here, it was 26.50 or 25.80, somewhere in that area. Um, well, I looked at this day and I said to subscribers, we want to buy it on a pullback. It is highly volatile, treat it that way. We, aren't, we don't have too many longs, new longs at this point, got some shorts. That's, that's the way we're looking at the market right now. Uh, we have a short that we, we, we've just entered right now that we had missed recently. Oh, we actually got it, but we, uh, no, we missed recently. So what, I, what I'm looking at here is this is such a select market. So we missed it by, the low today is 28.55. We just missed getting this today because I wanted it for a certain reason. I said, if we get it, if we're long, raise the stop, and I gave certain parameters. Well, we just missed it, and what did it do? Immediately after it pulled back this morning, we got within, I think, a point. 38.39 uh, is the high. 28.55 is the low. Um, this is really moving. And someone had asked, how would we play it for the next leg up? And that's what I said. So um, that was in the den. But we uh, technically, we've missed it. It's unfortunate. I think it's in play. Every once in a while, you get some stock that just appeals to every type of, of play, even a long term. This is a, even for a long term position, uh, back when it was in the 15, 16 area. This was something that you could consider that it's in the sector that's really important, like like the cybersecurity. So this is kind of dealing with that in a way. Anyway, we've missed the trade. The day is young. You can still see some kind of a pullback. This is a whopper of a leg C. So ARQQ trading at 34.47, up 290, up almost 10%. The, 
Once you start getting this kind of uh, action, it means that some money is going to come out of um, some other sectors because people are now looking for real short-term quick trades. All right, let's get back to our story here. And I want you to, so a couple of questions came in. Have I finished that? TLT, I want you to look at the TLT. So bonds trading at the higher end, meaning that the yields are at the lower end. Good, I like that kind of action. Uh, one, most importantly, what I am looking at here is, um, what does the Fed do? Well, looking at the chart, the Fed, there's really not too much the Fed can, can do. They're going to try to be spin as positively as we can. You know what? I'll do some other. I'll, I'll, the Dow's at 357. This is a huge move to the upside. s and up 38. We'll be back in a moment. We have all in Seminole. Oh, I'll be back with you in a moment. We can get this. That's all good. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charted software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back, and we're going to go straight to Earl in Seminole. Hi, Earl. How are you? Good morning, Basil. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Uh, let's take a look at SLV. Uh, I think I got it at the bottom, but I, I'm looking at a possible exit point. So I, I'm pleased you got it at, at the low, folks. S, SLV is the silver, it's really the iShares Silver Trust. It's trading at 2120 right now. It's up 36 cents. Now, there's a little divergence between gold and uh, silver. 
At this I particular that, point, yeah. yeah, in this particular point, I would actually say that silver has an edge to it, um, a slight edge to the to the positive side. But um, how can I explain this now? Uh, yeah, so, you know, I looked at this when I saw that you were calling and you wanted to look at the SLV, and I thought to myself, Wow, let's if the SLV is just coming off with two little doji candles and a nice green candle today, if this is suggesting that there's going to be a bounce in the commodities, if it's part of an inflationary thing, that's one thing. But if independently silver is trying to show that it's got strength and every once in a while it kind of plays catch up to, to the strength of gold, and once, just once in a while, it'll actually lead. I suggest to you that if you got in, uh, did you get in under 21? Yes. Okay, you see, that's a perfect, because I was looking and I thought, wow, if, if Earl's calling right now and he's already looking to buy, or if he's, they're two separate things. If you're already in a 21, uh, 20 right now and you're in under 21, you've got yourself I'm in a cushion. I'm 50. So you got almost the low. Let's see, the actual low was 20. Yeah, I think I caught the low, yeah. Oh, uh, 2052. 20, so you, you got, you pretty much got the low. So this is what I'm going to suggest to you. Timing wise, if this is a move in silver that at minimum is trying to fill the gap in the 21s, you will know very quickly because when gaps are filled, they act like a magnet. And that should see silver move very. I just want to see what silver itself is doing. SI. Let's go to that. Oh yes. Okay. So the way silver's got these two green. The day is young. We're not even an hour. We're just an hour into the trading day. Silver's been trading, of course, all night. But that's different. I'm looking at the actual price as a candle. So if silver at this particular use silver, if you can use the continuous contract. And trading at 22.87 right now, it's up 1.17 percent, up 0.26. It's up 26 cents. If silver today's Wednesday, at Friday's close, if silver hasn't given back and gone underneath 22.50, but in fact is trading in the 23.20s, that'll suggest to me that silver's trying to make a recovery to get back into the rectangle trading range of the 23s with a lot of resistance at 23.80 to 24. That's going to be the big test. If at any point over the today, rest of today, tomorrow Thursday, tomorrow Friday, if it closes under 20, 22.50, that's a, a close on the day. If it trades under, that's okay. But if it closes under 22.50, that's going to suggest that both gold and silver probably will be stuck in a bit of a range, a sideways range, maybe with another a further test of the low. So this your entry point was perfect because it gives you have you got a stop in place or you're just gonna watch it for the moment? No, I, I watch mine real close, so I'll watch it. Okay. So a question in the Den Taco asks, Basil, do you consider the Fed meeting in your decisions? on silver and gold, just to a certain extent. But let me put it this way. It's the reaction of gold and silver. I don't care what the Fed says. I do care what the reaction in the market, and I do uh, care what the reaction is in the commodities, especially gold and silver. So let's see what happens if later today, silver is still trading very nicely, and your SLV, you're, you're already up a point, basically. No, not a point, yeah. but you're up. You're up very nicely. So I'm just going to suggest to you, if I was looking at this chart, I didn't know what it was, and it did the dreaded H, and it closed underneath for three sessions. This is now the, the, the fourth session, and it's getting back. And the low that was made in the SLV on the 20th of August was 21.20. We're trading at 21.20 right now. If it's able to close into the 21.33 or higher today, I'm going to say to you, wow, I think your timing was just perfect because just not knowing what it is, based on the chart formation, the little candle, the little doji candles, indecision candles, and then a nice green candle, 
with a stochastic at 8%, with a chance to get to 11 or 12% if it rallies. This is your opportunity to have more than a bounce, but actually a nice trade that could last about two, three weeks, maybe more, but I'm just saying that's the way I'd look at it. What you want to see is your SLV starts to fill in the gap with a high of 2135, and that was the gap of the, the down from the uh, 15th, the low was 21.95. The 16th, the very next day, the high was 21.35. So there's a pretty big gap that has to be filled. You want to see it work its way. It actually, it's funny because um, this is a very rare, I don't know if you looked at the chart of the SLV, but this is a very rare island reversal on the daily chart with a huge three week or more trading band with the gap to the upside, the low that was made on the 20th of August of 21.20, gapped up the next day, and that gap hasn't been filled. And then what happens is, if there is, so there's an island reversal, because it gapped down again after trading to, I made this and I just, I can't remember who I discussed this with in SLV, I said, I'm calling this right here in the Chapman Wave methodology, I'm calling the high of 22.38 on the 30th, and then on the 31st, it was 22.38 again. I said, I'm calling that a peak B because everything about it with the stochastic fading says that there should be a D with a down arrow, and that's exactly what we got. We got the dreaded H, plus I circled it with an arch, with a, well, I'm circling it now. Actually, I shouldn't do that because that has two different implications. I'm going to put it in with a big rectangle to say that there was an island reversal. Now, it happens a little bit more with these any commodity or anything that trades overseas overnight because it, it's already trading by the time it opens. So you get gaps, but an island reversal like this is very unusual. So if in the month of, we're almost done with September, if at any point in October without taking out the low of, Tuesday uh, of Monday of 20.52, if there is a move that sees a trade above that low, which is 21.62, that's the low of the 27th. If there's a push above that, you fill the gap. That's really a big deal. So I like your entry point. You've got to stop in place. I'm just going to say, let this play out. Let's see what the Fed does. Good, good attempt at trying to pick a, a, a bottom that isn't just a pop. It could be more Bad than that. Bad you're the best. You oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Not at 2.30 if it suddenly plunges. Thank you. You're welcome. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at tfnn.com for only $37.50.
Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, uh, folks. Gosh, uh, there's, there, are, there are a lot of traders out there. A lot of people are pumping uh, and pushing and doing whatever they can because uh, my, my platform here, yeah, this particular one, has slowed down a little bit. And look, we almost got, we went to 43.81, went to 43.84.75. Just about on that trend line, Chapman Wave inside track, this is inside, inside wedge, uh, target resistance line, a little dash line there. So we'll keep an eye on that. All right, let's get back to our story. So a couple of things came up. Um, for yesterday, I was asked, I, I got it, I saw it a little too late. I didn't realize that there was a question there. And that question came in, is FedEx, is it time to be looking at FedEx? Well, what I would have said, I don't like the action right here. Just look, walking on the downside, it's really, I've always wondered, <clears throat> for decades, I always talk about walking the nine period moving average or the 14 period moving average. And I've always wondered, what do you do on the downside? So for any of you who have ever been in um, you know, some kind of a, a trolley that goes to the downside, like if you, if you are a ski lift or anything like that. So it's like a ski lift right here. So you've got the ski lift, and you, you're hanging, 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 and you haven't hit the ground. And then all of a sudden... <laughs> The wire snaps or something, and it plums to the ground. That's the opposite of having a big spike, a rocket ship spike from a nine period moving average. This is the pink nine EMA resistance, and it plums to the downside. It's down 21 at 231. Uh, and yesterday I would say, I just, there's something wrong. If Federal Express, with everything that's going on with Amazon and, and uh, just delivery in general, is not making new recovery highs. In fact, it's making new unre unrecovery lows. And lo and behold, we plummeted. So thank, I thank goodness, I, Jason, I hope you didn't uh, touch this. But the question then is, oh, is now the time? With, the, with the, I, would, I would say just hold off. It's telling us a story. It's telling us a story about the, look, in the IYT, it's the rails that are doing very nicely. Uh, and even the, the overall iShares Dow Jones Transportation Average Index today is up one at 246.53. So that would include UNP. I don't know if I've still got my notation. Look at that. UNP it looks terrible. CSX, terrible. R, which is a rider. I think that's in there. Holding quite nicely at the upper end of the range. A Y, I think. Is that Allegheny? I can't remember. Yep, Allegheny Core. I remember these symbols. Trying to rally. I'm not even sure what is making the uh, transports move up like that. So all I can say is just be real careful. The divergence between the transportation index uh, and the Dow just recently making an all-time high, now pulling back. I, I, that's something to respect and just say, huh, that's not a great sign. It's not a good, a bullish sign. It's not... How the market interprets it so far is not a bearish sign, but it could be. Okay, so I just wanted to say X, FDX, 
hold off. I do think it will be a buy later on, but this is a very deep uh, pullback. And I think it's more the words, the, the outlook, than anything else. Um, so I, I didn't get into the fundamentals. I'm just saying it's not acting well at all. To put this together in context, if you look at the shippers, so the question came, DSX, uh, what was the question? Oh, 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 can I find the question right now? I wrote it down as something to discuss. So D Diana Shipping, bulk shippers. Oh, yes. So the question was, having taken profits in the D Diana Shipping, we've had this periodically. Uh, this person independently liked it, uh, got in, and, it, and called it a peak G. I put a peak D. I just wanted to show you, you're not incorrect in calling it a peak D. Because in the chap wave methodology, we're going to just take a moment here to talk about that. There was a, how do I get this? Oh, there, make it a little clearer. Make it very big here. So this is on the left side here. This is a daily chart. So this is what we got. We got a pullback from a peak E at $5.60, way back around the 14th of, I think it was June. Pulls back to $3.66. Then it goes small peak, A peak, B peak, C. The MACD turns positive. The on balance volume is flat. The stochastic pops over 80% and then comes back down and it takes a while. And then under this peak C that was made here, DSX is a symbol, at $4.50 on the 2nd of August, it starts a little mini peak A. I call it a gray A because it's under the previous one. Then it goes to gray B, which is still underneath that previous high. And then lo and behold, it makes the same high of uh, $4.49, well, a penny under it. That's still gray C. And then I typed in Chapman wave overlapping overlapping wave to leg D. That's, uh, that's a rule of thumb that we have, what's called an overlapping wave. When the two waves coincide, it usually creates at least a leg D. And then D very often comes back and retests the breakout of peak C1 and C2. In this case, it didn't. It spiraled all the way above uh, the five level, the resistance that was early July. It went all the way towards the 560 level that was made that high back in June. And it went to $5.21. Is that correct? $5, yeah, $5.21 on the 30th of August, pulls back for three days, retests, and then breaks out. Now, what could have happened is you call this a peak D, right? Peak C, D, and then you get the chapter wave instant restart, and you call this new A, B, and C. But I didn't. I said, let's keep going, because you remember the rule of thumb here is to try to keep going in sequential order to at least a G, especially if the MACD nine period differential is positive, which it is. So he goes EF, and then we get the G off to the doji candle, and it makes a high, and it makes a recovery high of $6.36. And so that was a G, $6.36. And now it's pulling back. It gapped down, and it hasn't filled the gap yet. It's at $5.31. I'm going to suggest to you, that just at this particular moment, I would not be surprised if after spectacular moves, many of these, let's see what ship is doing. It's one of those that was on my list. Oops, don't type it there. Type it into the little rectangle right there. Ship. Okay, that's making a D, made a D right there, and it's pulling back. So I would just suggest you, just on the shorter term, some of the shippers are taking a breather. So the question was, is this a time to get back into something like a DSX? And I'm going to say to you, can you hold off a moment? I'd rather be buying signs of strength in the stochastic of the MACD than to buy right now after such a spectacular move, 366 to 666, almost a double. I would hold off a tad. And I think in this market environment right now, I don't feel uncomfortable saying that. But... Um, I could be wrong, but it has got a leg D in the uh, monthly chart, leg E slash B with still pretty good technicals in the weekly chart. Well, we might, I'll have to do more analysis on it, but at this particular point, I just have to give it another day. If there's a move into the gap higher than uh, yesterday, uh, the high of uh, the day before, 
558. If it can get to 562, I'll have to reconsider. But at this particular point, I think it needs a rest. I'll be back in a moment. Dazzle Chap and Tiger News is out. Dazzle at 370. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave! Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, so quickly, uh, Sophie, I had a question about Sophie. Uh, Sophie is uh, Sophie Technologies Inc. Big move up today. It's up eight percent at one up one thirty three at sixteen point fifty one. So some of you might recall we had a discussion about this some time ago. I said it was an E slash B, probably an E, and that was an E at twenty four point ninety four back in the beginning of June. Well, twenty four ninety four and it plummets down. It goes under forty, goes to the thirteen area. Now it is three points higher and it's breaking this. Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. Day is young. It is up very nicely. I'll show it to you there. That's better. Now you can see. Now all of a sudden, 16.16, the 200 period exponential moving average, that becomes support at 16.55 legs C. And talk about filling a gap. This is filling that gap from early August. So this is a very good breakout. Day is young. Looks very good. Question I had about SMHs. SMH is trading up. Uh, 3.17 at 268.18, trying to fill the gap there. I think that this is going to have a problem, right? At 276.69, all time high on the 16th, plummets down to 260. That's 16 points. It's not a big deal. It was about 7%. 
Now it's trying to come back. If the SMHs are able to get into the 271, 272 area, I must say that that's is, is a real good chance that it double, tries to double top at 276, test that recent high. But if it fails between now, look, it's already got the nine period moving just yesterday, closed underneath the uh, 14 period moving average. If in fact there's a give back and it closes by Friday, it has even one trade, not a close, but just a trade under 265. That's suggesting it's making H patterns probably in the stores. Have a wonderful day. Great program coming up. Uh, yes, okay, you are post US for getting out of question. You is one that I understand was still acting very well. Looking very good. I'll be back. You're going to be softly. I'll be back tomorrow. Have a great day. I'll be early tomorrow at 8 o'clock.